All right, losers, we're kicking dependencies. In my six plus years of software engineering, the question of should I add this dependency to my project has come up many times. And a lot of the time, the answer turned out to be yes. But I've started to change that, and I think you should too. So come along and let's talk about dependencies. I want to begin with talking about what this video isn't. I'm not saying we should revert to caveman and have to write operating system calls to do basic things like read files or handle network connections. These are problems you really shouldn't have to ask developers to solve these days because we have bigger and better things to do with our time and energy. What I'm wanting to talk about is the overabundance of dependencies added to projects and the bloat and load on the developers working on these projects as a result. Dependencies are not inherently evil and there is a reason any programming language worth its salt has a first party package manager that most, if not all developers using that language will use. For instance, Rust has Cargo, c -sharp has Nougat, and Node has a disaster. The issue I run into is that at the end of the day, the problems I am solving don't need complex solutions and decades of engineering backing them, and actually adding these dependencies makes the problem I am solving more complex and isn't designed for what I am trying to do. Let's take a real world case that I have worked on. I run a personal site and over a year ago wrote it using Angular. This took me a few days at least, and I kept having to fight Angular all the while to do what I wanted it to do. I wanted my post to be written in Markdown and have it displayed on my custom site. This is a project that used 34 direct dependencies, both for building and used in the final product. This definitely could be reduced, as I don't necessarily use all of them, but this was the Angular template with a few additions to handle my needs. The project consisted of about 70 plus files and I'd consider it well architected for any Angular application. It had components to handle the various repeating or reused elements and is relatively straightforward to add new content to the site. It did markdown parsing on the client like almost everything else in this project, and I was pre-rendering the site as I wanted to get those fancy embeds on sites like Google, Twitter, or Discord, and near instant first page loads. This project was hard to move in though. I had to understand the cogs of so many working pieces in order to get things to work as I expected. Things such as meta tags for embeds are difficult to get picked up correctly, and is best if you include them in the initial HTML so crawlers can easily retrieve the information without having to run JavaScript. Most of them don't. I was working on another project when this one came to be, which was taking an old Express application I had written years ago and rebuilding it to last until the hardware was on, died of old age. I never wanted to visit that project ever again and knew it was currently in a vulnerable spot, as it was cloud dependent and an outdated application with lots of dependencies I didn't vet properly. The project inspired me to work on my website again and approach it from a new perspective, something that does exactly what I needed to do and nothing more, so I don't have to think about it late at night. To start with, what was the actual problem I was solving? I need to be able to serve static assets like images and style sheets. I need to be able to serve dynamic HTML, including elements from Markdown. And I don't want it to be a chore to work on, update, or deploy. With these goals in mind, I started shopping for solutions. This time around, I chose Rust to begin with, so we'll be in the Rust ecosystem going forward. I ran into things like Tokyo for multi-threading and async, Tower to handle services, and Axum to wrap it all in a bow with a web framework. I ended up choosing six total direct dependencies to handle everything I needed to do. TinyHttp, which dealt with my interactions with HTTP requests and responses. ASCII, a library used with TinyHttp to define headers, since HTTP headers aren't utf -AM. Mod, the bread and butter of my development cycle, dealing with generating all of my HTML based on my requirements. Comrack, a library to generate HTML from Markdown, a core pillar of what I want the site to do. Syntect, a library I use in conjunction with Comrack to deal with syntax highlighting of Markdown code blocks. In one cell, an alternative to lazy static I used to create some data at runtime that I needed global access to. I very well could have built this with less dependencies or more dependencies, but I feel like this is the balancing point an application with my goals should have. The dependencies are built with explicit purpose. They don't do much more than they have to. Let's look at these individually though and see what I'm really using them for and what I had to make myself as a result. I'm going to tie in the ASCII dependency here as well as it goes hand in hand with TinyHttp to handle everything it does, so from here I'll be considering it part of TinyHttp. TinyHttp, unlike many modern backend frameworks, doesn't include things like request handling, a templating engine, and all the other bells and whistles you'd usually expect. It does one job and it does it incredibly well. Take incoming HTTP requests and provide them to me to deal with. This resulted in the start of my program looking like the code in front of you. Don't be scared, the code won't bite. We'll walk through it together. It starts up a server, creates multiple threads to handle requests based on how many theoretically are available, and cleanly exits by making sure all the threads are joined to the main one before the application exits. This would typically be where you see things like Tokyo, Tower, and Axum. Handling setting up your routing, services, configurations, but that's not what we need at all. I just need to serve basic web requests, most of which 
is returning data with a content type. Let's look at that server thread function, the core logic of the server. It's strung for example's sake. What this does is loop over the available requests until the server closes. I can handle my responses directly in this method, as there aren't many of them. It does end up being pretty long though, and even breaks out into another function, find resource, to deal with things such as the images and CSS my site needs to serve. But this is really all I need. Sure, things such as async could be introduced here in an effort to make the system handle more throughput, but I don't need that complexity, and all it will do is make my application more complex, it's when it just needs to serve a couple basic requests. Mod is a great tool that handles all of the templating my application does. It's essentially what the core bread and butter of my site runs on. In the earlier example where I called templating render home, this is the dependency that handles all of that. As an example, here's what I use to show a project tile on my site. I've cleaned out some clutter here to show you the core of what it does. It takes in a project and on all its associated information and generates the given HTML for it. It's a lot like an Angular or React component, but we're doing it server-side. We can include the results of this into another function, effectively turning it into a portable piece of our website. This is used extensively, and I wouldn't be able to make this website without it. I could, like a caveman, copy and paste HTML between my pages and just make the whole site static, but that is unmaintainable and inevitably leads to human error. A more complex case is what I'd do to handle a list of blogs. It's actually not too shabby. What this does is take in a set of blogs and generate the HTML for all of them sequentially. A fantastic example of using this is the home page. It simply takes all of my blogs, grabs the first three, and builds the list from that. My blogs are always sorted newest to oldest here, so this will effectively get the three newest blogs. An alternative example of this is my blogs page. It's actually a very similar example to do what I do for the recent posts, but this just lists all of my blogs instead. There aren't a lot of these, so I don't need to concern myself with things such as pagination, and even if I did, I could use all of Rust's existing tooling regarding iterators to do it with just this. Overall, this is a 10 out of 10 dependency, and it makes my developer experience far better than without it. It even compiled checks a few things for me, letting me know of issues ahead of time. These two single-handedly deal with all of my markdown woes. Comrack parses my markdown, and Syntax makes my code blocks shiny and colorful. These are things that aren't very flashy, but are needed to make my dream of writing everything in markdown a reality. They aren't problems I want or care to solve, and I don't have much to say about them because they just kind of do what I need them to do, and I ignore them otherwise. These two combined share a grand total of 20 lines in my code base, but handle all of the needs for Markdown. A worthy price to pay, and something I'm not highly concerned with for things such as security, as all the content these deal with is made by me. I'd be more concerned if this handled user-generated content, but it doesn't, so it fits my goals. What's in front of you is, I'm not joking, all of my code related to them. It does the job, and it's boring. I can move on to other aspects I actually want to work on. One sells the tool here in my toolbox that is purely a developer comfort here. I had a very simple thing I needed to do, which was generate some data once at runtime and use it everywhere. One cell is a great tool for this case, and I previously would have had lazy static here, but this ends up being cleaner and easier for me to understand, so I continued using one cell instead. Its usage is the heart of my database strategy. Yep, it's just a vec. I really don't need much more. This serves every purpose of a data store I need, and is so small, any other strategy would take longer at runtime than just iterating over the vec. It's here simply to make my life easy, and it does the job perfectly. It slots in like a glove here, and I wouldn't have made this without using something like it. After running through all of my dependencies, I hope this shows that everything I have here has explicit purpose and does exactly what it says on the tin, and not much else. These explicitly fill my needs and are all I need to make what I am making. If you look again at dependencies I went against, like Axum, while they would be able to solve my problem, it ends up being more load on me as a developer and my resulting code. Keeping the design paradigm of Axum in my head is a mental load, having to consider the possible ways it could be solved with the tools, when at the end of the day, I know what I need and I don't want to have to fight someone else's design to do it. The quality, quantity, and size of a dependency means a lot, and while Axum is high quality, it ends up having a huge quantity of dependencies of its own, which is 31 plus direct dependencies. It also has a large amount of service area and deployment costs you need to think about. In contrast, I have 95 total dependencies that make it into my build for my website. The direct dependencies I picked are all high quality, there aren't a lot of them, and their surface area, mental load, and deployment costs are minimal. So what did all of this get me at the end of the day compared to Angular? 28 less direct dependencies, and hundreds of indirect ones dropped. 1200 lines of code reduced to 800 lines of code. 70 plus project files reduced to 17. A server that builds to a single 4 megabyte exe versus a 6 megabyte 52 file server that needs node installed to run better behaving, and far more friendly meta tag creation and management that works on all of my pages without days of development work. A site that works without JavaScript. No, like actually, I really don't ship a single character of JavaScript. 
so my site works JavaScript less. My production build times went from 30 plus seconds to 5 seconds, and I enjoyed working on it so much that I actually want to keep working on the site and made this whole video because of it. I forgot to mention, I also rebuilt this site in the setup in an evening. The original took days of debugging and development time for me to get the embeds working properly alone. I consider this a huge win for productivity. There are some things that I did lose here, and I think they are worth talking about though. All page navigations now require a full page load over the previous occasional requests after a load for blog and project markdown. This is a deal breaker for some, and I don't have hot reloading if my assets are code change. In regards to full page loads, this is more of a problem that there is no support for partial page loads without JavaScript, and in this case, if it was a concern of mine, I'd introduce HTMX on the client side. If something akin to HTMX was introduced and implemented as part of the HTML specification, I wouldn't need a single line of JavaScript to build far more complex and rich sites. But for this one, I'll be fine without this feature as it's already blazing fast for its small nature. For hot reloading, I don't actually find this to be too much of an issue in reality. I both infrequently need to actually see my changes in real time and have such a fast build time due to my minimal dependencies that it actually compiles just as fast as the hot reloading Angular. The only difference is this isn't automatic and I'll need to refresh the page like a caveman after restarting my server. But this isn't an issue for me and I'd rather have a better deployment experience. In defense of Angular, I wrote Angular in a production code base for multiple years. I know what the tool is capable of and how to use it effectively. I can be really good at solving problems that the setup I have built simply can't compete with. It allows you to build rich, complex sites across a team of developers. It allowed us to build fluid, interactive experiences for our customers and it worked. But this isn't that kind of application. It's essentially a static site that is very simple and can be done without the vast toolbox Angular supplies. I just need the basics. I'll hold my tongue on my full thoughts on Angular though for this video. It warrants a whole entire video of its own and it isn't relevant here. I think using the right tools for the job is extremely important, and when you bring the whole shop to make a paper airplane, I think you've gone too far. It is important to define what problem you want to solve and what you are willing to do. It's always a trade-off of developing something yourself or using someone else's existing work. I didn't waste my time redoing common and solved problems like HTTP requests, templating engines, or markdown parsers. These are things that would take a lot of time to do yourself. There are small dependencies that exist that solve these though, like TinyHttp, Mod, and Comrack. They aren't large dependencies and add an extremely high amount of productivity to my work. I don't need things like JSON serialization, WebSockets, services, or request tracing though. These aren't at all used by what I am making and I don't need to care about their design considerations. I simply do not need it. It only adds complexity, mental load, and runtime cost for something I don't need to consider and isn't my problem space. So next time you're considering adding a dependency, understand what it does, what you need from it, and what costs and benefits it gives you. If you're building a fast and dirty demo, use all the tools at your disposal. Go wild with the dependencies. But when it comes to building a maintainable long-term code base, really consider what you're taking on by adding these dependencies. The amount of hours of reading all the documentation, best practices, change logs, keeping it all updated and secure, the added costs, your build times, and the security surface area you need to cover and be aware of. If what you need is a program that takes in a simple HTTP request and spits out a simple HTTP response, you don't need a highly scalable async framework. You just need a few threads and some basic libraries. I'm not saying the dependencies I mentioned here are bad either. Tokyo, Tower, and Axum are highly praised. These are major projects with large passionate teams that keep them going. They are amazing and bring large amounts of people, projects, and organizations huge gains in productivity. I don't think I need a single one of them though to make my stupid little blog site that'll get a couple hundred views if I'm being generous. Build only what you need to with only what you need and trim the rest. You'll thank me later when you have to inevitably maintain it though. Thank you for watching this video. This is a bit of a departure from my normal content, but I hope you enjoyed the video regardless. There's so much I can talk about in the world of software, and I feel like it needs to be said. The driving force for me making this video is the frustration of having to update, maintain, and patch software I'd written in the past that aged like milk. Every line of code, every dependency you have is a liability and something you need to maintain. If we can do the same thing in a simpler, more maintainable way, we should do that, because software sticks around for a long time, no matter if we like it or not. If this is something you want to see in the future, please like and subscribe. If you have something to say, leave a comment below. If you don't like it, you know what to click. Let's take a real world case. Bleh. Let's take a real world case. I can't say world. <laughs> God, fuck. Sweat all up. 
In regards to full page loads, this is more of a problem. Hi truck. Something akin to HTMX was introduced and implemented as part of the HTML of Oh my god, it's such a tongue twister between the X's and the L's. Build only what you need to with only what you need and trim the rest. You'll thank me later when you have to inevitably maintain it though. Squeaky fuck! <laughs>